Hi everybody. Hello and welcome to our Facebook Live question and answer. I am Rami Caldas at the Caldas Center and joining me tonight is our special guest Angie Sonnenberg, president and founder of Hope Against Infertility. Hope Against Infertility is a Wisconsin nonprofit that supports couples struggling with infertility. We'll start tonight by first getting to know Angie and about Hope Against Infertility's mission. Then at the end of the evening, Angie and I will be taking your questions about infertility. If you have a question, please uh, post it in the comments of the Facebook Live page, or if you would like to submit an anonymous question, please reach out using Facebook Messenger and indicate that you'd like to share your question anonymously. We want everyone to feel completely comfortable and we'd love to have your questions. Just a reminder that this discussion is meant for informational purposes. Only if you have serious health concerns, please consult your physician. If you'd like to contact us at the Calvin Center, please call us at 920-886-2299. Angie, thank you so much for being here tonight. Hope Against Infertility sounds like an amazing organization. It doesn't sound like it, I know it is. <laughs> that helps many Wisconsin couples in need. Could you share with us how Hope Against Infertility began? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having us tonight, it's an honor. Um, so we started a nonprofit uh, about a year ago and it really came about uh, when my husband and I got married, we decided like a lot of couples, you know, we wanna have you know children right away. Uh, we were fortunate enough to conceive and get pregnant within about five months of being married and uh, everything was going well. Our eight-week appointment was wonderful, and then at the twelve-week appointment, we found out that we no longer had a heartbeat. So, um, underwent a DNC, and then after that, things kind of just, you know, went downhill from there. It was really emotional. We struggled a lot. We had a lot of stress through the whole process, and somewhere along that journey, someone mentioned the call this center. So, uh, did some research. We set up an appointment, and we met with you in August of two thousand eighteen, and. We were immediately blown away when we walked through the doors. So uh, the atmosphere was welcoming. You immediately did an evaluation. We didn't have to, you know, wait weeks for that. So we, you know, we had some answers right away that day, and we came up with a game plan that we started. So you know, we left here on that appointment just feeling, you know, on top of the world. We felt like we had answers. We felt like we had support. Um, so we ultimately did some medicated cycles, some IUIs, and then we ended up doing IVF. Uh, through a clinic down in Gurney, but that whole journey we got to stay with the call to center. So um, the call to center did all of our monitoring, our ultrasounds, and we eventually did get pregnant um, and delivered with um, with Dr. Menya earlier this year. But through that entire process, even with you know such a great uh, clinic like the call to center, we we felt alone. We had a lack of resources. We didn't have a lot of people to talk to about it, and that's when we decided. You know, I think I think Wisconsin would really benefit from um, a nonprofit that can not only raise awareness, but also bring some of that financial um, commitment to these people through the grants that we offer through the nonprofit. Oh, that is absolutely fabulous. Thank God you did that because infertility is an exceptionally lonely yes. journey. You can be in a room with a hundred people and you will feel alone. Yes. And, uh, and, and it's, it is such a challenge and, and people don't even know how to interact with you right. when you're going through your right. struggles. You know, on the one hand, I suggest to my patients, seek friends out, seek family for mm -hmm. support. Yeah. On the other hand, frequently, they don't quite know what to say. Exactly, 100%. And, I mean, how, 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 what, what would you recommend yeah. to family members right. or friends right. when, when all of her friends, you know, are, are, are becoming parents, mm -hmm. all the sisters and sister-in-laws right. are becoming yeah. pregnant, yeah. And, the, and God bless her, the mother-in-law right. is saying, hmm, sure would be nice right. if, if we had a little one from you oh too. How would you, yeah. how would you recommend yeah. a couple respond? Yeah. And, and you nailed it. I mean, the, unless you're going through it, you really cannot even comprehend the, the struggles that a couple goes through. So, I mean, I can't even tell you how many events I avoided. I mean, I avoided birthday parties, I avoided baby showers. You, you truly miss out on it because it truly encompasses your entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, going through this and, and yeah, the questions, you know, like, what do you say? And, you know, even when I was going through it, I would ask people, it, it was hard for them to say the right answer. Like it was never anything I was looking for because it's just such an unknown journey. So there's, it's, yeah, you nailed it. It's, it's a really tough time, but uh, our, our nonprofit serves to not only be a sounding board I and mean, all of our board of directors have gone through this right. journey in some way or another. Right. And we've, you know, when people share our stories, and not even people that are asking for grants or, or uh, funding, they just share their journey. And it's a way to kind of just dialogue back and forth, like, yeah, I've gone through that, or, or she's gone Ooh. through that. So, yeah, we have a really...
really great, um, it, we just serve as a resource for the community. Well, that is fabulous, mm -hmm. and I, I know many of the members of, of Hope Against Infertility in Wisconsin, and really a, a stellar group you've got yeah. there, and just fantastic. And so it, it is uh, challenging, you know, because then the, the individual couple finally gets the courage, because they almost, almost everyone first is in denial. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. and they go through their stages of grieving mm -hmm. even before seeing the doctor. Right. Okay, and then they go to the doctor, and it seems like nine out of ten times they hear something to the effect of, "Well, you're young, mm -hmm. give it time." Right. And I, I, it, you know, they could have been trying for a year mm -hmm. or two or three, mm -hmm. and that still comes at them. Right. You know, maybe a couple of thyroid labs or something like that. And that's where it's very important to become your own advocate, I think. Yes. And that's where I think Hope Against Infertility is really good, not only with the emotional support, mm -hmm. but with information. Right. Because there's no reason in the world that couples who are trying to become pregnant should know how, you know, what percent, you know, are pregnant after a year or how mm -hmm. long it should take. And so you serve for informational purposes too. Right, absolutely, and, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, after we had our miscarriage, we were told, you know, just wait it out, you're young. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you want a child so badly, a month, two months, three months of those negative pregnancy tests, you can't even imagine, you know, the weight that it has on your shoulders. So, you know, when we came here and we, you know, we saw you guys, you, we didn't feel like it was an inconvenience to you. We felt like we were being heard. We felt like, you know, we were being met with, you know, where we were at in that journey. So um, through that process too, you know, that, the clinic really helped us with our journey, but um, you know, a lot of couples not only need that resources, but then it's also you know expensive too. So the nonprofit not only gives the resources and directs people to clinics like yours, but it also helps you know financially with those pieces. That's as well. amazing. And so people actually donate mm -hmm. to Hope Against Infertility, and you, you distribute. You how how do people actually access something like that? Because right. all fertility therapy is expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yes, IVF is like the most expensive. Hopefully, you know, you can you know achieve success without that expense, but sometimes that's required. But even the beginning stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, I can't believe how much the price of Clomid has gone up yes. in just my career alone over the past, you know, uh, you know 28 right. uh, years or so. I can I mean, it's been around forever. You'd think, you know, <laughs> but, right. but it's still gotten quite expensive. The, 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 and, and then uh, the, uh, the, the evaluation, just to find out if your tubes are open. Mm -hmm. I've seen this price go up maybe five-fold yes. since I started doing this. Mm -hmm. It's quite shocking. And so how, how does someone uh, you know, access uh, some resources potentially right. through Hope uh, Against Infertility? Yeah, so we always direct people right to our website. So once you're at hopeagainstinfertility.org, there's a applicants button. So oh, you wow. fill out the application, and it's going to ask you. You know, we want to get to know you. You know, who is your, um, you know, who is your employer? What does your journey look like? What is your story? You know, what is your partner's story? Things like that. What have you already went through? You know, what are next steps? So once you let us know a little bit about your journey, then there's actually a checkbox where you agree to send us within seven business days. Um, some documentation. So we want to know what is your provider recommending, like what is your actual course of treatment, uh, what does your schedule and timeline look like, things like that. And then we also want to know, to your point, because it's expensive, do you have any insurance coverage? If so, what is your out-of-pocket responsibility? So it's all of that information, and then once we get that, we have the board meet to discuss the application. I am so impressed, because if, if someone had that, that would be amazing, mm -hmm. just because when you enter into the infertility evaluation and treatment world, uncertainty is up here, That's all right? Awesome. And to actually have experienced people mm -hmm. who've been through the same thing, right. who know the roadmap, who can tell you what to expect, in spite of the numerous different possibilities, right. can flesh that out with you, is amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is very special, I, that's fantastic. And so, so I, I thought that we would go ahead and see what questions are coming in tonight. So, and okay. So we'll go ahead and say thanks to Angie again for coming in tonight. And just a reminder, if you would like to speak to us at the Calva Center, you can call 886-2299 or go to calvacenter.com. And if you'd like more information about Hope Against Infertility grants, visit hopeagainstinfertility.org or email 
hope at hopeagainstinfertility.org. And so, the first question, how does the Calvis Center and Hope Against Infertility work together when a patient of the Calvis Center is awarded a grant? Sure. That's Brooke. Yeah, okay. so, uh, so Brooke, when we actually award the grant, we already know all about, um, we already know about your story. So we know what your treatment plan is, we know what clinic you're using, things like that. So when we email you to say, you know, this is the award that we're giving you, this is the amount of funding we're giving you and what it's to be used for, um, at that time, we'll let you know, hey, let the call the center know that Hope Against Infertility is going to be calling and making that payment. Just make sure they make a note on your account, and then I'll actually call and either make the payment or direct the funds um, in the safest way possible to your account. Um, and then after we do that, we always ask, let us know how it's going. Let us, you know, think about you during the journey. Let us wish you well. So um, That is yeah. absolutely fabulous. And, and so thank you very much for that question, Brooke. And the next question from Kayla, Angie. How do my husband and I apply for a grant with Hope Against Infertility? What are the requirements? We've been struggling to get pregnant due to endometriosis and PCOS. And that's from Kayla. Yeah, so Kayla, the best thing to do is gonna to be to go to our website, hopeagainstinfertility.org, and click on that application link. You can either fill it out online or they can print it and mail it in to us. But really, there's no strict guidelines to it. And as I'm sure you're aware, you know, every story is different. You know, every you know, couple has a different thing that might be preventing them from being pregnant. So we can't say like, this is the, you know, the criteria you have to follow. We really get your story, we get your journey, we get your documentation, and then as a board, we sit down and go over all the information that you've provided us and make a decision from there. Okay, excellent. I have a question, uh, Angie. Does Hope Against Infertility also help people who have not succeeded, who have recurrent pregnancy loss? 100%, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we still consider that infertility and a lot of our board members have gone through that too and that's another thing that's not talked about a lot like the miscarriage piece of it so uh, we encourage anybody to you know who's experienced any type of infertility including recurrent loss to come visit us ask some questions you know apply for our grants we're always you know open to anybody's story because that you know that is people go through such a journey i can yeah. tell you that in in, uh, in our experience at the calvary center we've 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 had people who've had anywhere between uh, you know six months and 15 years of trying to become pregnant yeah. mm -hmm. and before they succeeded uh, once they knocked on our door thank right. god and uh and any uh, anywhere between uh, a couple to uh to uh, 21 can, uh, miscarriages confirmed mm -hmm. miscarriages in a row before uh, they were blessed with successful pregnancy and it's just you know dotting the i's crossing the t's figuring it out in a very methodical way, right. the most cost-effective way possible, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you'll, you'll get there. And so, and so the next question to us comes from, how are uh, funds raised for the grants? That comes from Melanie. Yeah, uh, so Melanie, I, like I said, I'm honored to be here because the Call to Center is our, one of our biggest supporters of the nonprofit. You guys have consistently been our gold sponsor for our events. Um, so the gold sponsor is going to be like the biggest sponsor that we that we have. And coming up, we have the uh, Hope Against Infertility first annual golf outing, which uh, the Call the Center is the the large sponsor for that. But uh, in addition to the Call the Center and, and clinics like that, we get a lot of our funding from our events. So we do three big ones every year: um, the golf outing, which I said is August 14th at Irish Waters in Kakana. Um, we do the annual 5K that's at Common Park in Appleton, and then we do a dinner and hope event as well. So. Anytime we can get people to register for those events, those proceeds go directly to the nonprofit and creating grants for those different couples. Um, if people are looking to give back, we're always taking donations, you know, prizes, baskets, things like that for the raffles. So uh, I encourage people to come to our events. There's so much to do. There's so many things to win. Um, and we're always looking for people to, you know, make donations that way and, you know, help fund these different grants. Well, the 5K walk was just fantastic yeah. last year. And then, uh, unfortunately, the dinner had to be uh, you know, put off because of the COVID-19 mm -hmm. crisis, but it's just such an amazing group of people. It is a good time when people get together, not only for support, but yeah. just to have a, a good party. Right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, just a reminder, if you'd like to speak with us at the Calvis Center, you can call us at 920-886-2299 or visit thecalvacenter.com. And if you'd like more information about Hope Against Infertility, Visit hopeagainstinfertility.org or email hope at hopeagainstinfertility.org. From Leah, 
How many grants from Hope Against Infertility are awarded each year? Yeah, so great question, Leah. So we are fairly new. Uh, we've been around for about 10 months, and so far we've awarded um, six different grants. So they've ranged from couples going through IUI and IVF. Um, right now we actually have three couples mid-cycle of, um, of their grants. So we have two couples going through IVF and one going through IUI like this month. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, hoping and praying that we have success from that. But um, as a newer nonprofit, you know, we hope to grow that every single year. So we'd love to be awarding grants, you know, multiple grants every month. And uh, the ability to do so relies heavily on our free events every year, just getting people to, mm -hmm. you know, come to those events, support that way. Well, so. fantastic. And uh, as, as stated before, you know, the, these events are thoroughly enjoyable and worth supporting. And obviously the Calvary Center feels very strongly about mm -hmm. this topic and that's, uh, we are just honored to support Hope Against Infertility. So the next question from me, my husband and I were blessed with our, uh, uh, our little um, one last year, thanks Dr. Calvis. We understand the hardships of infertility and would like to give back. How do we make a donation to Hope Against Infertility to help other couples? Oh, thank you very much. How exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so may any any type of donation, you know, in the form of monetary, prizes, you know, baskets, things like that are, are helpful. Um, to do a financial donation though, you can go to the website hopeagainstinfertility.org, click on the donate button and you can use a credit card to make a donation right there. Uh, there's a form you can print off and they can mail that in with a check. Um, and like I said too, just coming to our events and registering for those events uh, are huge support to the organization because all of those proceeds benefits um, the nonprofit. Well also and just coming to the events it is just so meaningful not only the funds that all of everyone brings with them mm -hmm. but for those going through the struggle yes to know there are others mm -hmm. it sure it sure makes an impact mm -hmm. when you go to an event and 200 other people show up right and well hey yeah. you know I'm not alone after all yeah, that's amazing yeah, so definitely. thank you, May. So, from uh, Maddie, how can I participate in helping couples through Hope Against Infertility? Are there events I can attend? Yeah. So the the golf line, that's our next one. So that's August fourteenth. It's going to be our first annual. So we're looking forward to that. But. Uh, with the golf outing, we actually uh, were reached out to by the call the center, and they're going to be there volunteering their time that day. So we're excited to, you know, have them on board again, see that support. Um, but again, the, the golf outing is August 14th at Irish Waters in Kakana. If you are not a golfer, we are doing a dinner only option. So if you want to come and just buy a ticket for the dinner, we'd love to have you. Uh, we'll do some, you know, discussions at night, have some speakers, have some prizes, things like that. And then the golf outing um, kicks off at 9 o'clock for those who do want to golf. And we have pole events and a whole bunch of other things. But, uh, and like you mentioned, we had the 5K in October. And in, in two, we had so many people that came out of the woodwork that wanted to share their journey there. So it just felt like a really great community of support that um, October last year when we did that walk. And then, like you said, the Dinner and Hope event. We hope to do our first annual next year. The one in March this year was canceled. Right. Hey, for the golf outing, I mean, are both is for both men and women. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and and hey, can couples golf together even? Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. we have. You can sign up individually. Sign up as a foursome. We'll put uh -huh. you on a team if you don't have a foursome. Awesome. So we're excited. Well, fabulous. No one should feel unwelcome. Right. Everyone is welcome. Okay. From Julie, how do you deal with prying family members who constantly ask when the babies are coming? Oh. My goodness. oh. Yeah, if I had a dime for every time somebody asked me that. But really, I think putting your story out there, being open and honest about that, I think so many people are not ashamed, but they don't know how to you know, share with the family, I'm going through this. But I think the more open and honest you can be, the more that you can you know, help educate, help them you know, redirect those questions and let them know, you know, this is why I'm not conceiving right now. You know, we're, we're struggling and this is what we're doing. And then you can kind of have that open up, honest conversation, so. Oh, I think that's, uh, yeah, you know, honesty and openness mm -hmm. is very important because, you know, trying to just, you know, avoid the questions from your parents and that's difficult. Yeah. And it, you don't, it, it doesn't need to be confrontational. Right. You know, hey, right. you know, and I try to encourage a lot of parents, I, you know, you may have heard me say it on TV, hey, don't, don't ask those questions, parents, you know, you don't know what private struggles right. people are going through, right. just, especially around mm -hmm. holiday time, just don't. Right. And, um, but, you know, it's so, um, 
ingrained in humanity the, the, uh, the, the, the gift of procreation right. and through any religion in the world. And, uh, and so it takes on such uh, meaning. And, uh, and so it does, it's it just, uh, you know, you're, mm -hmm. it just, you're raised to say, oh, I'm gonna have a family too. And then, right. uh, then suddenly the expectations are not met. And, and I think that's a, a real challenge, but open, openness mm -hmm. and honesty is the best way to go. Yeah, and, and to that point too, it did, like I said, I missed out on so many different things because of the, the fear of the unknown. I didn't know, you know, what was my body doing? What was it supposed to do? So I felt like when I came here, I got answers right away and I felt a confidence that I could, you know, share about it. And mm -hmm. I didn't try to avoid those, those events. I felt, you know, more confident to be able to, you know, live my life, go out and do things with friends. That's so, beautiful. Just take the steps. So important mm -hmm. because it's almost like, you were practicing social isolation before coronavirus. Yeah. Oh my right. goodness. <laughs> oh right. man. So from Grace, um, I was diagnosed with endometriosis and will be undergoing surgery. My doctor believes we'll be able to get pregnant afterward. However, I'd like to be prepared if that shouldn't happen. Dr. Keldas, how long can it take to get pregnant after surgery? Angie, what types of fertility treatments are considered for receiving a grant? So, um, I'll go ahead and take the first part there, Angie, as far as how long it will take after uh, uh, surgery. If, if, if indeed endometriosis is present, uh, Grace, because the only way you can for sure tell it is, um, if you have it or not, is, is if you have a laparoscopy to diagnose it. Frequently, as, as many of my patients know, I, if, if it's stage three or four, I can actually feel it. I can feel the nodules on the uterocycle ligaments and so on, and 95% of the time, that's exactly what is present, okay? And so after the surgery, within one year, all right, if everything else is normal, within one year and your ovulatory and the semen analysis isn't too bad and the tubes are open, which can be checked at the time of surgery, save yourself a little, a little uh, cash there on the hysterosalpingogram front, right? Um, then uh, then um, uh, you're looking at 80% chance that you'll be pregnant within a year. So I'll tell you what the Calvin Center does. Depending on the situation, depending on the age of the individual, um, after removal of endometriosis, and it needs to be excisional therapy, it cannot be ablative therapy, uh, the burning doesn't work, okay, it's the tip of an iceberg type of thing. But anyway, after removal of endometriosis, I will give people either three months or six months, and they will have an appointment to discuss the game plan and very methodically go through fertility treatment if they're not pregnant within three or six months after surgery, like I said, depending on age and depending on how long they've been already doing fertility treatments. However, very frequently after removal of endometriosis, I mean, when you're looking at 80% within a year, boy, oh boy, that is extremely high success rates and is well published, all right? 90, 90% uh, within two years. But I don't, I don't suggest to my patients that you wait uh, a, a year or two before you have fertility therapies, obviously, just three or six months. I encourage them to do that because I like to save my patients money and fertility treatments are expensive. And so, but anyway, I would say that within six months you should see some results, otherwise you need to be doing something to make it happen, okay? Keep it, keep, keep it moving as uh, Amanda Proctor says. But anyway, uh, so Angie, uh, then there was the other part of the question, what types of fertility treatments are considered for receiving a grant? Yeah, and we'll, we'll consider any type of treatment. So whether it's just a medicated cycle, you're just starting your journey and you're having a hard time struggling to afford that, um, we'll work with you then. If it's, um, you know, if you have PCOS, if you have endometriosis, we'll work with you then. If you have to do IUIs, IVF, anything like that. So when you apply for a grant, we just encourage you to be as open and honest and give as much information as you can and really have already had that conversation with you um, or your provider to, you know, lay out what your, your journey might look like. Excellent. Thank you. All right, and from Jesse, how important is diet when trying to conceive? I, I it, it is pretty important, Jesse. It's uh, I think uh, depending on the reason you're not trying to, uh, that that you're not conceiving, uh, I think that um, the diet is very important. For example, for endometriosis, non-inflammatory diet is a really good idea because even though you still have the the, the disease process, the autoimmune dysfunction, you know. Anything that reduces the inflammatory process can help. Can I quantify that on the basis of diet? No, no great studies have been done, no. However, common sense would suggest that it's a good idea. For polycystic ovary syndrome, you know, if you have that low carb diet, no processed carbohydrates, it's not a bad idea at all. 
uh, because you will ovulate more regularly, even if it's still irregularly, if you can keep uh, your glycemic uh, index uh, in control there. And from Hannah, how do we find out if the cause of our infertility is me or my husband? Hannah, simply you need a basic evaluation. The two of you, it's never an individual that is not uh, that has uh, fertility issues, it's a couple, okay? And you go through this together. And so about 40% of the time, it's actually a male factor going on. And so all you need to do is a basic evaluation is recommended by the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. A few labs to figure out, is there a prolactin issue? Is there a thyroid issue? Do you have polycystic ovaries? An ultrasound to look at your ovaries would be a great idea. And then a semen analysis and a, and a dye study to make sure the tubes are open. Or, like I said, that can be done concurrently if you're having surgery for strongly suspected endometriosis that can hinder fertility. And so that is how a couple finds out if it is what, what's causing it. So I try not to say me or my husband or me or him because that's divisive in a way, uh, Hannah. And I, 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 I totally appreciate where you're coming from, but I say that that's the way you can find out. Real easy, first visit. Oh my gosh, it looks like we are already out of time today. That went by really quick. We need to have you on again, Angie. That, that big went by so fast. Thank you everyone for joining our conversation. If we did not get to your question, we'll follow up with you in the next few days. A quick reminder, if you'd like to speak further with us, visit calvacenter.com or give our office a call at 886-2299, that's 920 area code. If you'd like more information about Hope Against Infertility, visit Hope Against Infertility uh, dot org or email hope at hopeagainstinfertility.org. Angie, thank you again for your time this evening and for being with us. It's been a real honor and I thank you for what you do every day. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. Have a great evening, everyone.